some smuggler. Aaron, you're late again. Oh, sorry, teacher. I had to clean the yard. He was on the Christian side again, I bet. Smuggling. <laughs> smuggling, <laughs> smuggling. Stop that. Aaron, come here. You have been warned not to sneak through the wall. Your mother wouldn't want you to grow up to be a smuggler and a thief. It's all right, ma'am. I'll change when I'm older. Here, want an egg? <laughs> No, thank you, Aaron. You work for it, you keep it. <laughs> All right, children. Now, once again, from the beginning, we don't encourage visitors at rehearsal. Forgive me for interrupting. Is Aaron Feldman here? Aaron? Joseph, is anything wrong? Nothing serious. Do you know me, Aaron? Sure. Teacher's husband. You're in the council. You know me? Who doesn't know the famous Aaron Feldman? The sewer rat. The prince of smugglers. I'm not a smuggler. Oh, Aaron. I'll get a policeman saw you three times. The next time he'll arrest you. He won't. I give him an egg to shut him up. You won't be able to give an egg to the Nazis to shut them up. They gotta catch me first. Aren't you afraid? Sure, but I'll do it anyway. You won't snitch on me, will you? No, of course not. I'm gonna do it again. I say concentrate on the productive, the healthy. I say concentrate on feeding everybody. For a while, the smugglers helped feed us. Now the Germans are shooting smugglers. And they threaten to shoot 20 Jews for each smuggler they catch. Those boys that crawl through the sewers may be our salvation. Nonsense. They'll get us killed. We will all be killed anyway. I beg your pardon? We will all be killed anyway. How do you know? It has begun already. The Nazis in Russia have started. No more ghettos. What are you saying? Mass murders. Firing squads. They mean to kill every Jew in Europe. Ridiculous. What is your name, young man? Anna Levitz. I tell this council we should be smuggling not only food, but guns and grenades. Such talk will guarantee our deaths. If this council is too cowardly to give the order, the Zionist will. We don't intend to die without a fight. Get out! You'll all die here being polite and tipping your caps. You have no authority. You represent no one. Throw him out! Why did you arrest one of my nurses? She was arrested for good reason. Sarah Olnick is a smuggler. Sarah Olnick went outside the wall to buy food for the children. She knew the rules. No smuggling. I want her released. Do you? She's one of the best nurses in the children's ward. A bit of class snobbery. Would you be as eager to have her freed if she were a housewife or a beggar? Of course. Then you can appeal for all eight. Eight? What the hell do you think I am? A monster? That little one, the beggar girl, she is 16. I know her. 
crime? Like the others. Smuggling. Food for her baby. Oh, good God. You're a Jew. I was a Jew. I'm a convert. That's why I have this job. I intend to keep it and obey orders and survive. But you use your influence with the Germans. Who the hell are you to talk? You and your brother Moses, so high and mighty on that lousy council. What do you do but follow orders from the Germans, hand in lists of names, do their work for them? You want to be a hero? You try it, Doctor. Just try it. The Jewish Council made another appeal to the Germans, but... but uh, you didn't need to come. I wanted to. Aaron! Why couldn't we have saved them? It was hopeless, Bert. God, I'd like to see some of them covered in blood. My brother and I have forgotten the prayers. The prayers are no help anymore, Weiss. chemicals from the hospital. We'll make our own. Charcoal, linseed oil. You're going to print a resistance paper? First issue on the streets today. But if I bring you chemicals to make ink, then I'll be involved. Better involved with us than with the council. But council members are alive. Lawbreakers get shot. I don't want to get shot. You'll die anyway. And better to die protesting. Look, I am still not convinced they intend to kill us all. I mean, what good would dead Jews be to them? He can go. We don't need him. The master crafts will not work. But such equipment. Whew. Look, look, don't misunderstand me. But logic says that we are not. Logic all doesn't prove anything anymore, Mr. Weiss. To the Jews of Warsaw, 
Let us have an end of apathy. No more submission to the enemy. Apathy can cause our moral collapse and root out of our hearts our hatred for the invader. It can destroy within us the will to fight. All right, I'm with you. A blessing on you, Mr. Weiss. We could use the doctor, too. It can undermine our resolution. Because our position is so bitterly desperate, our will to give up our lives for a purpose more sublime than our daily existence must be reinforced. Our young people must walk with head erect. You're braver than I am, Berta, whoever posted that and printed it. It's funny, I keep thinking about our son, Rudy. What about him? If Rudy were here, he'd... He'd be in the thick of it, putting up posters, refusing to give in. I have a feeling he's safe. I have faith in Rudy. I too, Joseph. I confiscated all the film I could find. Dreadful quality. Who filmed it? Global said it was for battalion archives. I had the feeling it was for their own entertainment. I suppose we should keep a record. Do you? All our work should be documented. I wouldn't show this stuff in newsreel theatres, but I'd love to rub Himmler's nose in it. Maybe get the Fuhrer to attend a screening. Casual at all this. They don't even seem to be crying. It's quite incredible. Almost a religious rite. Load the wagon for a loaf of bread. Go away, no civilians around here. Please, one loaf. I said go away. Don't you know this hotel is German army headquarters? Stupid idiots. One loaf. Hands off, you hear? It's the Red Army, huh? What you now? Come. Rudy, I can't eat it. My stomach is jumping. I believe it's a potato pancake. <laughs> nice and greasy. Stop it, you monster. Some thanks. I go and get us dinner, you only complain. <laughs> Wait till we're married. I won't stand for it. Hold it, don't move. What is it? SS.
Bryce? How did you get here? Never mind. He's a relative, can you believe it? Sister's married to my brother Carl. Last time I saw him was a soccer game. That's before they threw me off the team. It wasn't my fault, Rudy. I got nothing against you. <coughs> Water. Water, please. Elvis, listen. You've been back to Berlin? You've seen your sister? Six months ago. My family, tell me about them. My parents. <coughs> yeah, your brother's in Buchenwald. My mother and father. In Poland. Inga heard from them. They're, they're all right. Here. I don't... I don't remember. Warsaw, maybe. How the hell can I remember? Lay off, Rudy. What did I ever do to you? Kristallnacht? Three years ago? You and that bum Muller beating up my grandfather? You got it wrong. We let him go. We let you go. My sister Anna? She's... What? She's dead. What happened? I don't know. Last year, a year and a half ago, I, I wasn't even in Berlin. They, she got sick. Pneumonia or something. Inga went to see her. She, she died in the hospital. She was only 16, Helena. I know, Rudy. I know. And you loved her so. I ought to kill him. No, no, Rudy. He could be telling us the truth. I am. We took your mother and Anna in, for God's sake. They're all right. The doctor and Mrs. Wise. Liar! <coughs> this uniform makes you as guilty as if you arrested Carl and killed Anna yourself. I obey orders. Listen. Just get me out of here. Get me out to the street so I can get to an aid station. Maybe I'll bury you under a pile of plaster, huh? The way they bury Jews alive. I'll get you work passes. I'll get you out of here. It's not going to be safe for Jews in Kiev. Rudy, he's right. I think we can trust him. Helms, 22nd Division. Who are they? The Jews. Take them over to the truck! Move them up with the other Jews! Come on, oh, move! You bastard. You saved your neck. What's going to happen to us? I don't know. I just want to live long enough to get even with that lousy Helms. Didn't anyone know the Russians had mines all over Kiev? What the devil are you doing all day? Drinking vodka and chasing ballerinas? <laughs> Russian sappers have leveled Kiev half the cities on fire. We've lost several hundred men. Apparently, our counterintelligence failed. Of course, we're too busy shooting Jews. What do we do now? I can hear Himmler screaming about counterespionage. We'll blame it on the Jews. You've seen those Kiev Jews. Old women, old men and beers, children. They blew up Kiev. If we say they did, we absolve our intelligence and give Heydrich what he wants, a Jew-free Ukraine. We've shot over 100,000 Jews. Tough. You're looking at the man who cleaned up the ghettos in Zhitomir, Bertichev, Uman. Are you asking for more? Remember, Colonel, if you kill 10 Jews, it gets easier to kill 100. Easier to kill a thousand, and easier still to kill ten thousand.
zostać w rabocznym łagierie. O czym pocho nie będzie. I to jest pawiar. Pasiba. Mówi, że jesteśmy na pracę. Pracę. Nie słyszałem tego wcześniej. What do they call this place? Abbey Yard. What does it mean? Grandma's Ravine. They don't march very well, do they? Ukrainians. What's that over there? Jewish Cemetery of Kiev. Appropriate, isn't it? Of course, this remains a resettlement operation. Precisely what they were told and precisely what they believe. It's astonishing how they cooperate. Which proves they don't deserve to live. Ah. There they come. We expected about 6,000 to turn up. The men tell me more than 30,000 Jews are down there. Simply
because nobody could do this to other people. Take Major Dorf to his quarters. I'm in charge of road construction in Ukraine. This place has got to be surveyed. Not today. It's a security area. You mean I can't go through because of the target practice? Maybe next week. Some problem? The civilian wants to get through. He says he's the road engineer. That's right, Major. I'm under all... Rick. Uncle Kurt. Get in. You might like to check with me at headquarters later. Final tally. Tally? Yes, it's uh, some bureaucratic business. Goodness me, Eric. Look at you. The fearsome major. What were you doing there? Executions. Ah, yes, of course. That would be your responsibility. I suppose somebody has to. Who were the, um, the victims? Well, the usual scum, saboteurs, people who blew up Kiev. Criminals, black mark tears. Jews? Some. They're active in the resistance. I've only been in the Ukraine for a few weeks, but I hear your fellows are pretty thorough with dealing with the Jews. Only when necessary. We're resettling them. There is crowded with them. All going towards Baba Yar. And other places. For resettlement? Most of them. Criminals and spies will be executed. Cruel business. Any war is. But all those civilians. I can't wait to see my family. Leave me, Uncle. Without them, without Martha, without the children, I wonder if I could go on. You're still the best pulse taker in the world. You've had a lot of practice. A road trick, so that it won't be too cold. Old GPs are full of old tricks. Here, Joseph. Mozart. <laughs> you mustn't tease me. Breathe deep, mouth open. Again. <sighs> you sound better. You feeling stronger today? Yes. I want to go back to school tomorrow. If I miss school, they run away. Well, darling, maybe we ought to have the photographs here. Joseph, they fill me with hope. When I hear the children crying in the streets for bread and see the frozen bodies and the starving old men, I look at the pictures and I think maybe our sons are alive and happy. I am certain they are. Carl has a skill. He's a fine artist. They'll make use of him. You see how it is in the Warsaw Ghetto. I'm a doctor. I can be used. Anybody who could contribute survives. It's cruel, but it's true. And we will not speak of Anna. You can't bring her back. <laughs> I must stop this idiotic weeping. 
when I get out of bed and I go back to school, I, I promise I won't cry. That's much better. I'm a spoiled woman, indulged in too much by my parents. You, the servants. Not so, Verda. You're as brave as anyone here. Joseph, the money we had sewn in the coat when I left. Hmm? What about it? Take it. Take it. It can't help us. Put the children in the hospital. Berto, we may need it for ourselves. Hmm? Come in. Uh, Dr. Weiss, your brother is back with the man from Vilna. Thank you, Mr. Lowy. I'll be right in. Moses went to Vilna. Just to the railroad station. This fellow had to be sneaked in. Someone wants to sneak into the ghetto? Mm. No, he's a courier. Let's go back tonight. I'll be back. High level conference in the executive room. Don't believe anything the Germans tell you about ghettos or work camps. We take what they say with a grain of salt. They mean to murder every Jew in Europe. Impossible. Well, reprisals, yes, we've had them here. Not reprisals, mass murder, the extermination of every Jew. There were once 80,000 Jews in Vilna ghetto. Today, there are less than 20,000. 60,000? Shot by the SS. But you can't shoot 60,000 human beings. I don't believe you, Koval. How was it done? The SS took any man who could work, sent them out to the countryside to dig ditches. The Lithuanian police circled the ghetto. No one could get out or in. The Lithuanians went into the homes, beating, whipping. The Jews came out quickly. A few tried to hide, shot on the spot, taken in trucks to the ditches, undressed, searched, lined up in the ditches, shot with machine guns. They stood there, no tears, no resistance. Maybe Vilna was an exception. Ghetto after ghetto is being wiped out. The German army, they are decent officers, they must object. Open your eyes. Warsaw has the largest concentration of Jews in Poland. Your turn will come. They can't find enough ditches, guns, bullets to kill all of us. Oh, they're an energetic and ingenious people. Perhaps they will. Tell us what we must do, couple. Resist. You can start with this. So all Jews in the ghetto. Let us not go to our deaths like lambs to the slaughter. Young Jews, I appeal to you, do not believe those who wish to do you harm. It is Hitler's plan to annihilate the Jews. We are the first. It's true we are weak and alone, but the only answer worth giving to the enemy is resistance. Brothers rather die fighting than live by the grace of the slaughterer. Let us defend ourselves to our last breath, Vilna in the ghetto. But how much good will it do? They say they'll be killed anyway. They, Dr. Kahn? We. Bare hands against tanks and artillery? Do you have any guns? Not yet. We'll teach the young Zionists to obey orders and become soldiers. Then we'll get guns. That sounds like Jews. No guns, but start an army. The Germans can be bribed, bought off. They know the war is finished for them. They've lost Africa. America will invade Europe soon. And we will be dead when they get here. Well, sir, you shouldn't be out of bed. I listen, Joseph. Well, it's just, just a lot of talk. Nobody's really certain what to do yet. I tore the coat apart. You must buy guns. How many? In 
the first two days, more than uh, 33,000. We'll get rid of over 100,000 there before we're finished. Have you improved security? Yes, sir. What about the clothing? It's distributed to Ukrainians, and they don't seem to mind. They don't ask questions. Rewards after duty. It's the same in the army. Your father got this long vacation only after his duties on the Russian front were over. And Mama received this new piano for being so brave while I was away. Oh, it is magnificent. One of those wonderful old Becksteins. I was stunned when the movers brought it in. I couldn't believe it. And it didn't cost a penny. Really? No, it was sitting in the clinic around the corner. No one played it. It was gathering dust. And so the physician who ran the place offered it to me. Offered it to you? Yes, in the interests of party unity. Oh. This piano needs tuning. Ah, tuning a piano is no problem. Getting one is. Well, it doesn't seem to have been very hard for you, nephew. <laughs> Whose was it? I told you. The clinics. Oh, some Jewish people live there, but they went away. Oh, went away. Let's have an intermission now. Shall we open the presents? A little less greed, children. Martha, let them be. Oh. Only once a year. Two white mice. Mama, I wanted them now also. Oh, Dad, I love them. I'll name one Siegfried and the other Wotan. You better change one name because the pet shop shows me one of them is female. A boy and a girl? They're going to live together and make nice babies. I can hardly wait. Babies. I might give you the sick ones. Peter! Eric, the children are tired. Why don't we all sing Silent Night and they can go to bed? We can listen to Midnight Mass on the radio. Uncle Kurt, you see how being married to an administrator has made her efficient? I think it might be the other way around. Martha's efficiency has rubbed off on you. Come on, children, come on. Ready? Yes. Something seems to be muffling the keys. Is one of the strings broken? Oh. Things were lying on the strings. Some old photographs. Pictures, let me see. Yeah? Sure. Who are they? It's Dr. Weiss. And the children, I imagine. Do you know where they are, Eric? Not the faintest idea. I think he was deported years ago. Laura, get rid of these. We didn't finish singing Silent Night.
How is the Mullah family tree coming? Lies on top of lies. What horrors they make of us, Felsher. And shall we survive? He's got me painting in Charlemagne and Frederick the Great. They are jealous because we go back to Abraham. Beautiful. You won't forget the two crusaders. There and there. Weiss, you and I will be friends before this mess is over. Who knows, with America in the war, I may need Jew friends to say nice things about me. Don't count on me. After all I've done for you? Your wife was here yesterday. Your monthly letter. Don't you want it? You made her pay the usual price? It came postage due. She had to pay a bit, but then she can afford it. Go on, Mother. Get out of here. I don't want her to come here again. She won't. You're being transferred. You and Felcher. Request for a couple of high-class artists. Transferred? you developed reputations. Concentration camp geniuses. You're going to Theresienstadt in Czechoslovakia. The paradise ghetto. I'll, uh, I'll miss playing mailman for you. <laughs> Don't lies. Listen, nothing is as it should be anymore. Read it. Be tolerant of her. My beloved Carl, dearest husband, I miss you more each day and pray for the day when we will be united. One can always hope. I keep going to official people, but there seems to be no way I can secure your release. We must hope that your parents are well. Miraculously, a letter came from Warsaw some months ago. Your father is working in the hospital and your mother is teaching school. I wish I had some news of Rudy, but he has vanished from the earth. Oh, I love you, Carl, and I want you so much. Please understand me, darling. I've had to do things to get these letters to you. But my love for you is undying. Your loving, Inga. Loving. Cheer up, boys. They say Theresienstadt is not so bad. I always wanted to see Czechoslovakia. the other a Berlin shyster. We estimate that there are 11 million Jews in the world and the final solution will deal with all of them. All? The Fuhrer has ordered the physical extermination of the Jews. Language, Heidrich, language. 
The policy regarding the Jews is as follows. They will be sent to labor camps in Poland, where natural attrition due to hunger, fatigue, and disease will take its toll. And any survivors will be dealt with accordingly. The action commanders will be expanded. And other methods. May we know what they are? The use of gas is being examined. Gas? It's a possibility. Now, General, you know what happened with the Mercer killings some years ago? Sir? I mean the elimination of Cretens, Moritz. Yes, but what do you mean? Do you know damned well what I mean? The Vatican and the church has raised hell. He backs down and the gas things ended. Well? The same thing will happen. We can't get the churches angry at us. Kaitoy, this bloody business is getting out of hand. Look, I represent the civil branch of the Reich. And I'm damned worried. These are only Jews we'll be handling. Yes, controlling the foreign press, the banks, whispering in Roosevelt's ear. Nobody will lift a finger to protect Jews. And we'll be on firm legal ground. We'll be eliminating enemies of the state, spies, terrorists. What's the difference if they're shot, gassed, or worked to death? I don't like this. Oh, damn it, I'm a lawyer too, and I want to be heard. The conventional notion of justice is dead, Frank. Do you happen to remember what the Fuhrer said about your precious law? I don't recall. Dorf, you'd better tell him. I believe the Fuhrer said, here I stand with my bayonets. There you stand with your law. We'll see which prevails. If it's extermination you want, I'll oblige you. Oh, some momentous decisions were made today. Inevitable decisions. Fascinating. You have second thoughts? Of course not. You and I are obeying the law, the Fuhrer's law. Not some abstract notion. The kind of thing that Frank was babbling about. Clear conscience? I'm obeying orders. Who am I to judge my superiors? Why should they need judging? Uh, tell me, Dorf, how is your, um, your charming wife and your lovely children? Quite well. I remember the day we spent in the Prat in Vienna. When was that? Three years ago, I came to you for guidance at Heydrich's request. Aye. Oh, yeah. Young innocent. Your own family, Eichmann? Splendid, all things considered. Wartime shortages and so on. Our families, Eichmann, the women and the children of Germany, they give us courage, determination. No question. Loving wife, happy children. We owe them a better world. Like the decisions we made today. A necessity to assure the future of the race. Precisely. And later generations will not have the will or the strength to finish these tasks. I look at my children and I know I'm doing the right thing. help. I don't think I'll ever be warm again. Give me your hand. Rudy, we cannot go on. We cannot go on running like this. You think we should have stayed in Prague? I don't know, but at least there. I had my apartment. We could get food. I had friends. Your friends are all in concentration camps. I think I am a burden to you. I cry too much. Helena. I want to cry also. But I learned when I was a kid back in Berlin, you never cry in a fight. Never. Even if it hurts. Because there's always the fellow who wants to see you cry. And if he does, he'll murder you. Nothing left, not even a turnip. Rudy, what are we going to do? You give me all this talk about this Jewish nation your, your Zionist friends want. 
out in some desert, surrounded by Arabs? Th that fellow with the whiskers, what was his name? It's Herzl. Don't you try to make me laugh again. I just want to knock some sense into your head, that's all. You think you're going to get that place without a fight, huh? Without killing or being killed? But I'm cold. I cannot think about Herzl when I'm cold. I'll get you something to eat. Close your eyes, I have a present. <laughs> Rudy, stop. Come on, close them. <laughs> All right. Now open your mouth. What is it? Raw potato. <laughs> Vitamins. It's making me sick. <laughs> then pretend it's a pastry. <coughs> ah, brioche. Fresh from the bakery. Will you stop it? Mm. You smell that coffee? I'd like mine with cream. <laughs> You're awful. Here we are, Berlin family. Plenty of food, but we'll never live in Berlin. And we will never live in Prague. Where then? Your non-existent land of Israel? I don't know. But wherever we go, I will be happy. So will I. Come on out with your hands over your heads. There's 50 of us here, partisans. No, Rudy. Rudy, that knife won't help. There are too many of them. Go on out, slowly. One gun, I should have gone for him. Where are your 50 partisans? They'll be here when we need them. Who are you? We are Czechs. We escaped to Kiev, and then we ran away from Kiev. Why? Does it matter? We are Jews. We are too. Shalom. 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 Jews with guns. And with your guns. The 50 partisans? That was Sasha's imagination. I am Sasha, commander of the Partisan Brigade from Zhitomir. You know, the lucky we found you instead of the Ukrainian Partisans. They would have killed you as soon as the Germans. Do you have a gun for me? No. At the moment, we have a lot more Jews and Americans. Come, let's go to the camp. You both look starved. Straight ahead to the square. No talking. Wise and Felscher. Wise and Felscher. Here. Wise and Felscher. Uh, I'm Carl Weiss. I, I, how did you know us? Word gets around. I'm Maria Karlova, one of the Terrasin artists. You are to join us. Stores and the bank. All of all's front. This camp is a fraud. You can get a cup of warm water in the cafe and buy your own valise back from the leather shop. But the bank? It serves you this useless currency. Then it's all a game. Nothing is a game to the Germans. Well, are you treated well? Or? The barracks are packed with the old and sick. They carry the dead out every day. Where you came in, that's a little fortress. Torture, murder, executions. Karl. This is no different from Buchenwald, except in the externals. What are they up to? Peretzin is their passport to respectability. I can't 
can't believe it. You will when the Red Cross comes through and decides the Nazis are treating the Jews with kindness. The Swedes, the Swiss, all the neutrals visit us. Ah, a bank. And a bakery. A cinema. What are those Jews complaining about? And they can get away with this? People believe them? Maybe they want to believe. Come on. You are pleased to be through with Buchenwald, I guess. This seems to be an improvement. Don't be deceived by surfaces, wise. An artist should see what lies below. Yes, thank you. Maria has told me. This place is a pest hole. You saw those old folks on the train? The ones with moth-eaten furs and bowler hats? Some of them are from my hometown, from Berlin. The last of the Jewish bourgeoisie turned over the last Reichsmark and artworks for retirement here. And they die of hunger every day. We are the lucky ones. You and Felscher keep your noses clean and you might survive. Does anyone ever escape? Or are people ever freed? Felscher, this is no ordinary prison. We are here for a long, long time. Your work? You and your colleagues? Everyone. And you're proud of this? Hmm? I saw no children who look like these. Uh, forgive me, please, Fry. I, I am certainly no tower of strength myself, but, I mean, ghetto children at play, Sabbath meal at Theresienstadt, I mean, really. Stand watch. We are a rather eclectic group. We use several styles. This might be called concentration camp gothic. Your work? Yes, but all of us do see. They're coming. today, hmm? Quite well. Now, come on. Good, down. good. My guest is Herr Bamsen of the Swedish Inspection Commission. He's heard about our artistic program and insisted on seeing it for himself. Uh, quite an atelier. Eh, hey, Bamsen? Hardly um, a torture chamber, hmm? <laughs> uh, Fry, uh, show uh, Bamsen uh, those portraits of the Jewish children, uh, please. Charming. Yet more evidence of how with kindness we treat our Jews. Whoever heard of a prison camp with a fine art studio? Eh? <laughs> and now, gentlemen, uh, let me show you our orchestra. We do, uh, as I say, try to develop and bring out the inherent artistic quality. Of the Jews. Uh, Bernstein, you have to go easy, why? He's a doctor. A doctor? Where's his office? Don't choke. He still can sew a wound or cut out an appendix. And the man praying? Samuel, he's a rabbi. A rabbi with partisans? That's my kind of rabbi. He might even get me back into the synagogue. Hey, you kids! It might not look like it, but this is a synagogue! Ah. 
Hey, I deal with you later. <laughs> it's just like Berlin. I was always getting chased for playing ball on Saturday. <laughs> How did you all get here? Uncle Sasha brought us out of Koritz. The Germans killed his wife and daughters. Over 2,000 Jews shot in one afternoon. My parents, my brother. All of my family. And one of Sasha's patients, Ukrainian, a good man, he let us out. 20 people. Then others joined us. From Zhitomir, Berdyshev, all the places where Jews were killed. To this camp. This is our fourth camp. The Germans come looking for us. Even of them, the Ukrainian partisans. Do you fight back? We will, when we get guns. What are you waiting for? It isn't easy. There are women, old people, children. Uncle Sasha won't leave them. He doesn't pray with the others? He tore up his prayer shawl when his wife was killed. He tells everyone who comes here. No more sheep to the slaughter. But you're just a handful. Thousands of others just went to their death. They were overwhelmed. No one believed it would happen. Hey, wife. You're on guard duty. You know how to shoot? Sure. Will this thing fire? If it doesn't, use it as a club. Come, I'll show you. What are you smiling about? I was just thinking my father's a doctor. Oh, where? He had an office in Berlin. He's been in Warsaw now, a long time. He once thought I would be a doctor. But you can't stand blood? No, just a bad student. Uncle Sasha. Uncle Sasha, may I go on sentry duty with him? Sure. Mottel will show you. Thanks. But stay awake. And no romance, either. Uncle Sasha, that fellow Samuel, your rabbi. What about him? Will he perform a wedding after we come off sentry duty? Why not? You won't even have to pay him. the bride to meet, the princess Sabbath, let us greet. Come to the Sabbath, greetings bring, for it is blessings constant spring of old ordained, divinely taught, last in creation, first in thought. In distress I called upon the Lord, he answered me with great deliverance. Baruch haba. Mi adir al hakol, mi boruch al hakol, mi godol al hakol. Hare at mekudeshet li beta bat zu kedat Moshe ve Israel. May your years be blessed with happiness and children, and undying love for one another. In the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are man and wife. It's the bride. I'm afraid to. Now that we're married. <laughs> Responsibility. 
family, house, insurance. You better save your money. You sound like my father. He used to ball me out for spending my allowance on soccer games. <laughs> Gentlemen. Whose idea was this? Colonel Nebe is an idiot. He felt the Reich's Führer should get a first-hand look. I know Himmler better than he does. Attention! Quickly, put your clothes in a pile. How many people? About a hundred, sir. Normally we process larger groups. You've already handled 45,000 Jews in the Minsk area in five months. Pika. We handled 33,000 in two days at Babi Yar. This way. Tall young man, uh, the second. He looks like an Aryan. Bring him over here. Sergeant, bring that tall fellow here. Now, are both your parents Jews? Yes. Any ancestors who are not Jews? No. Pity, I can't help you. Send him back. Whenever you're ready, Vice Führer. Ready? Yes, yes. Any time, Colonel Lieber. Fire! First time you realize it's a bit hard to take. Miserable little chicken farmer. And we shoot them as a thousand. Oh my god, some of them are still alive. Sergeant! Heidrich, we must find another way. Gentlemen, I have never been so proud of German soldiers. Your consciences can be clear. I will be responsible before God and Hitler for all your acts. The men are appreciative, Reichsführer. Let us take a lesson from nature. A combat is everywhere. Primitive man understood that a horse was good, a bedbug was bad. Now, you might argue that bedbugs and rats and Jews have a right to live, and I might agree with you. But man has a right to defend himself against vermin. 
still Heydrich, we must look for more efficient methods, yes. Well, neighbor, you botched that one. I'm Colonel, neighbor to you, Major Dorf. You're lucky you're not a sergeant after that mess. Who authorized you to invite the Reichsführer to that sloppy business? And couldn't you find gunners who'd kill them all at the first volley? Damn you, Dorf. Don't you bark at me. You're a disgrace. Major Dorf. Some of us are sick of your interference. Are you? Well, for your information, Blobo, we aren't pleased with Bobby R. Heydrich wants the corpses dug up and burned. Who the hell are you? Get your fat behind back to the Ukraine. Major Dorf, you have no right to talk to us in this manner. Oh, yes, he has. Heydrich's pet. You and that part Jew. Heydrich has no Jewish blood. And anyone who spreads such lies will answer for them. Go to hell. I need a drink. Listen, uh, Major, I have some ideas of what Himmler wants. More efficient ways. A lower cost for killing. Dynamite, perhaps. Injections. Gas. Let him go to hell! Join us, Major. Not him. Keeps his head clear so you can scheme. Like a damn kike. We'll have to do something about that little bastard. But what? He's quick on his feet. Just tell me you're with me. You're leaving for Poland tonight. Yes, sir, we're examining alternative methods. But before you go, you better read this. Major Eric Dorf of your staff is a member of a communist youth group at the university. His father was a communist leader who took his life in scandal. Dorf's mother's family, possibility of Jewish blood. It's not signed. They never are. How do you feel about it, Eric? It's all lies, top to bottom. I, I, oh, my father was a sort of socialist. I never was a member of the Communist Party. I may have uh, once attended a meeting out of curiosity. No Jewish chromosomes? Absolutely not. The usual check was run on me in 1935 when I enlisted. Unfortunately, Himmler has a copy of this. He wants another investigation, family records and so on. Didn't you assure him about me? Well, you know how it is in the service. Himmler and I have our little rivalries, and I'm afraid you're caught in the middle. Do we have any idea who sent that letter? It could be anybody. It's just a way of getting at me. Was your second in command? Yes. But everybody's wary of me. You see, Eric, I know all there is to know about all of them, from top to bottom. What a bunch of thugs and scum they really are. A veritable rogues gallery. Goring, drug addict and bribe taker. Rosenberg, I have his letters to his Jewish mistress. Goebbels, scandal after scandal. Himmler, something suspect on his wife's side. Not to mention Stryker and Carlton Brunner. They're no better than dull criminals. I trust I won't become part of your rogues gallery. Why should you? Assuming this letter is untrue. Laboring. The 70 are too many. How long does it take? 10 to 12 minutes. Longer when the bus is loaded so heavily. It strains the engine. The design will have to be improved. They weren't designed for this sort of work. What's it like inside the bus? Lots of clawing and fighting. 
and sometimes you can hear them pounding against the sides. You're not now. The motor's too loud. not what we have in mind. I'm inclined to agree. If we use this method, we'll be burning our truck engines all over Poland. Laborious. Slow. We need permanent installation. Yes. The Blurbull and I and some of the others talk about it quite frequently. Oh, do you? What else do you two talk about? Many things. Do you ever compose anonymous letters? Notes to Heydrich and Himmler about some of their staff? I have no idea what you mean. Don't you? dead, sir, except for two children. We had to shoot them. Very well. That's all. I don't like what I just saw. Neither do I. The mothers tried to protect the children, and that's why there were a few still alive. I don't mean that. Carbon monoxide is inefficient. You'd think with all our expert German chemists, we could do better. One left inside. Want them? They've killed more of us than the Nazis have. If you don't, I will kill him. Don't! If he gets back, you'll bring the Germans. No. I... No. Oh. Please. He was just a kid. Yuri says he's the kind who murders Jews for pay. Rudy, please. I never killed anyone before. I know. You had to. I thought I was so tough. Blood all over his face. I don't understand it. Any of it. My parents didn't either. Sasha, maybe. You want to live, Rudy. That's all you have to understand. It's not enough. When the killing's over, if it ever is, and we're still alive, what then? Then we will be a proper Mr. and Mrs. Weiss. 
and we will go to Palestine. Me working on some melon farm? You. <laughs> oh, Rudy, we will live to go there. Orange groves, cedar trees, little farming villages, and the blue sea. I guess I do owe you a trip to your Zionist homeland. Not a trip, Rudy. A life for us. Where they cannot jail us, or beat us, or kill us. Do you remember the first time we made love in Prague? Don't embarrass me. <laughs> it was beautiful. The best thing I ever knew in my life. For me too. Now each time we're together, the wonder of it. Two people knowing each other so closely. Not just the bodies, the arms, the lips. It's as if God or Nature, someone decided it had to be. Rudy, there's a poet in you. No. Just more love for you than I can describe. I know, my darling. I know. That's why I know we won't die. We will never die. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.